Welcome to Zaslow Show 2.0. It is a Thursday, the 17th of November. Good to have you aboard. You know what that means. Bad news for all the other podcasts out there. Got a great show planned for everybody today. We're coming off of a night where your favorite little basketball team, they lost for the eighth time this year. The Heat dropped a 7-8. and eight. No Bam at a bio last night. No Tyler Hero, who may rejoin them at some point during the trip. So, very shorthanded. Uh, against a shorthanded Raptor team, we'll, we'll obviously start the show off with the heat from last night. We got Thursday night football tonight. This is the time of year. I love this. I love this. Where you wake up Thursday morning, it's, oh yeah, we got football tonight. Great time. I mean, every night we got something going on, you know? So, tonight, you got a little bit of Thursday night football. Dolphins are off this week. Very, very sad. But... We get to relax, just watch all the games, and then get back to taking that ass next week against the Houston Texans. So we got the football tonight. You got the Panthers back in action tonight. They're coming off a win. They're two and one so far on this home stand. Our pal, my former co-host, one of the great guys in the entire world, Brett Romberg is going to join the show today. We're going to get Romberg on. Canes up Clemson this weekend. Canes are a disaster. Everybody wants to hear from Romberg. I get people, they're messing me. Yo, you had Joy on. You had Amber on. They're great girls. When are we going to get the Rom Dog on? So, that time is today. We're going to get Romberg on the show. He'll join us. We'll talk some canes. Maybe do a little bit of NFL with him. We'll catch up with our pal there. So, you're not going to want to miss that. Jessica Blaylock. She is our friend, Bally Sports Florida. She will make her return slash debut on Zaslo Show 2.0. See, once I started to get comfortable with everything, I mean, we got a whole team, you know, editing, producing the show, whole team, lots of people. And once everyone got comfortable, then we could start adding in the guests. And that's what we've been doing here. So Jessica will join us coming up in the show today. I want to talk to her about Jonathan Uberto coming back here this Saturday. Panthers back in action tonight against Dallas. And yesterday, for the first time ever in Marlins history, Sandy Alcantara won the Cy Young. He won it with a unanimous vote. So we got to talk to Jessica. So Jessica Blaylock will stop by. You don't know what else we're going to talk about with her. Uh, maybe it's music, movies, concerts. We have very similar interests. So we'll get Jessica on the show and we'll talk to her on Zaslow Show 2.0. All right. Thanks, everybody. Again, however you're listening to the show, we're, we're, we're reaching the end of week number three. The response, the reaction has been great. I appreciate everybody, however you're listening. I can't list all the podcast platforms, all right? I'll be sitting here forever, but we're available everywhere. So like, comment, rate, subscribe. The algorithm, the algorithm loves all that kind of stuff. I, I, I can't get involved in explaining to you how the algorithm works, but take my word for it. The algorithm likes when you do all that stuff, when you engage. So do it for the algorithm, all right? And make sure you check out the YouTube channel as well. We're posting all of our guest spots. And we're also posting a lot of the show. You know, like right now, you may be watching me. So, tell your mother to say hello. You might be watching on the YouTube channel, all right? So, I appreciate that. But let's think, let's start things off last night with your favorite little basketball team. The Heat drop to 7-8. and eight. Uh, Next up, they're, they're in Washington, D.C. tomorrow night. But the Heat were without, they were without Bam Adebayo, which you found out earlier in the day. They're still without Tyler Hero. Maybe he rejoins them at some point during the trip. And, you know, we talked to Eric Reed last night, uh, yesterday's show, and I said, not not the former midday host on 7-9 Ticket. I don't know what he's doing. But we talked to Eric Reed, television voice of the Miami Heat. And, you know, hey, what do you think about Vic making the trip, Oladipo? And, and I told him, I said, I, I think it's just to be around the team, you know. Eric was hopeful it means at some point he'll play, but they ruled him out yesterday for the entire trip. So he, he's just there to, to be around the team. That, that whole scenario is disappointing. It is what it is. There's nothing we can do about it. But last night, I mean, look, the big takeaway from last night, the Heat were shorthanded, obviously. And if you think the team is small when Bam Adebayo is in there, how about when he's not? How about when he's out? Last, it, it, it doesn't even look real. The second fewest rebound total in the history of the franchises last night. The Heat grabbed 23 rebounds. That's it. They were out-rebounded last night 42-23. to 
23 total rebounds last night. And by the way, I mean, Caleb Martin grabbed nine of those. You know, You're, Jimmy Butler had a weird game last night. Butler, I mean, the fourth quarter, he got a little bit involved. But Butler had a weird game last night. He had just 13 points. He only took eight shots. Got to the free throw line just five times. He had one rebound. One rebound. Jimmy had a weird game last night. So the Heat got hammered on the boards yesterday. And, and here's the game. I know Kyle Lowry made mention of this. And Lowry played well last night. Look, they were in Toronto. I guess he was trying, you know. But Lowry made mention of this last night after the game. Because the rebound disparity. And the Heat were out-rebounded. Offensive rebound 16-4. to four. Um, The Raptors took 86 field goals. Field goal attempts. The Heat attempted 66. It's 20 more shots. Can't win like that. You'll lose every single time. And it's not one of those deals where, okay, like like the game against Phoenix. Uh, you, you know, I don't know what the overall field goal attempt total was that game, but when the Heat outshoot Phoenix from the free throw line, 25 attempts to four, it's pretty likely Phoenix is going to have a lot more field goal attempts because every time you're fouled on a shot, it's not counting as a field goal attempt, it's counting as free throws. So, all right, that number can be a little bit deceiving, that game against Phoenix. Last night, the Raptors took 20 more shots than the Heat. Each team shot 22 free throws. So that, that explains even further how bad the rebound disparity was last night. Each team shot the same amount of free throws. And field goal attempts, the Raptors were a plus 20. You lose every time. Every time. And, and, and the Heat were up by 11, 70 to 59 early in the third quarter. Great start to the third and they wind up allowing 21 consecutive points. The Heat go seven plus minutes of game time in the third quarter without scoring. An 11 point lead turns into a, a 10 point deficit, uh, a, a huge swing. And you, you wind up coming back. I think the closest the Heat got after that point, like it was a three, four point game the rest of the way, you know, from late third quarter then into the fourth quarter. But ultimately, couldn't get the stops. Offensive rebounds. That was the whole thing. Offensive rebounds for Toronto, and, and the Heat winds up losing there at the Raptors. And it doesn't even matter that, that the Raptors... I mean, it matters, but it doesn't even matter that the Raptors without Siakam. I told you yesterday, the Raptors are very similar to the Heat. The team plays hard. They defend hard. They're smart. They're long. The Heat aren't long, but they're long. And the Raptors are always a problem, man. That's that, that's a well-run franchise, a well-coached team. I mean, Nick Nurse, he, he could be... You know, since Frank Vogel's not in the league right now, Frank Hole, you know, Nick Nurse... He may be the, the biggest offender when it comes to yelling at the opposing player on the sideline when he's shooting a corner three, but take that out of the equation. Nick Nurse, good coach. Good coach. So the Raptors beat the Heat last night. They're 9-7. and seven. The Heat dropped to 7-8. and eight. Next up is Friday. They're, they're in Washington, D.C. To, to take on the Washington Wizards. Uh, th there's some other stuff that, that we'll get to later on in the show. I, I do think something that you want to take away from the game last night, since Bam didn't play... Nikola Jovic got the start, and he was he was really good. Now, they didn't trust him late in the game. He was not in late in the game. Late in the game, you had your starting five minus Jovic, but with Gabe Vincent. So, coach didn't trust him late in the game, but Jovic got the start for Bam. He had 11 of his 13 points in the first quarter helped get the team going. So, 13 points, he was 4 of 8 overall. Hit a three very early in the game. Four for four from the free throw line. He grabbed three rebounds. Kid did a good job. And maybe that's a jumping off point where you're going to start to see him a little bit more. That looked to me like he deserves it. So he did not look like a liability out there on the floor. And defensively too. Didn't look like a liability. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I didn't think he was a liability at all out there. So maybe that, that's, a, that's a positive takeaway. Maybe you look at that and say... All right, you know, th this kid, he can contribute right now. Let's do it. Come on. So, like I said, next up, Friday night. Last night was disappointing. The big NBA news, though, yesterday was after giving up 153 points to the Sacramento Kings. Sacramento Kings, they're not a joke. They're a decent team this year. This year. After giving up 153 points two nights ago to the Sacramento Kings, Kevin Durant, after the game, had a one-on-one -on -one sit down with Bleacher Report, Yahoo's Chris Haynes. And he, he did a tell-all. And that was the big news yesterday. 
uh, in the NBA Ye yesterday afternoon and then into today. You know, got all the shows that are talking about the radio shows, the national shows. Very big news. So Kevin Durant sat down with Chris Haynes and did like a you know a, a tell all about his trade request from the summer. Opened up about that and and what's going on so far. A little bit of what's going on so far this season. So. I got a few takeaways in regards to that, all right? The first, if you read the story, it's not long, it's easy. But if you read the story, he, he, he crushes Steve Nash. Crushes him. I mean, <clears throat> even, though after, even though he was surprised that Nash got fired, and he enjoyed coming to work with him every day. Crushes Steve Nash. I'll read you some of the quotes here. So when talking about what happened over the summer, quote, it wasn't difficult at all to request a trade because it was about ball. I went to them and was like, yo, I don't like how we're preparing. I don't like shoot arounds like practices. I need more. I want to work on my bleep. Hold me accountable. Get on my ass and film if that's going to help you get on everybody else's head. I want to do more closeouts. I want to work on more shell drills at practice. This was the type of bleep I was coming at them with. It wasn't like, yo, y'all need to make sure everybody around me make my life easier. Hell no. Nah. I want to make sure everyone's, everyone else's life is easier. Ask Steve Nash. You can go call him right now. I would say, yo, I need more closeout drills. We need to practice more. That's what I was on. I wasn't feeling that, and nobody was on the same vibe with me. Jacques Vaughn is. I had some complaints in the summer. My complaints were not just about me. It was about how we're moving as a unit. I want us to be respected out here in the basketball world. I don't want players to look at us and say, oh, man, these bleeps are full of, full of bleep. That's not the type of team I want to be on. So when we're playing like bleep, you know the one person they're going to look at. That's why I requested a trade. Okay. So just crushing Steve Nash. I like though how he told the reporter. I like how he told Chris Hayes, hey, if you don't believe that Chris, Na Chris Steve Nash sucks, go call him. Call him right now. Call him right now. I'll tell you how much he sucks. That that I love that part. One of my biggest takeaways from that right there. First of all, what's the point in crushing Steve Nash at this point? I I, I don't understand what the point is there. But you can't help but think he has no problem holding Nash accountable. He doesn't like the way Nash runs a practice. And listen, I don't want to sit here and defend Steve Nash. He should never have been the coach from the get-go. Which, by the way, when Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving got there, they had a good coach. Kenny Atkinson. He's a current assistant for Golden State. He actually took the Charlotte Hornets job, then turned it down, and then went back to continue being the top assistant with the Warriors. Kenny Atkinson was the Nets coach. Remember, that team was supposed to stink. They were finally starting to recover from the, the disastrous draft picks, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett trade, and they were a surprise team. You had a bunch of, like, uh, go-getters, you know, between Jared Allen, Spencer Dinwiddie, Joe Harris. They had a nice little team that made the playoffs in the bubble, that made the playing game, playing tournament in the bubble. They had a nice little team, right? And Durant missed that whole season. And what happened when Kevin Durant was ready to play? They fired Kenny Atkinson. So they could bring in their guy. Uh, Steve Nash was Durant's guy. So they could bring in their guy. And as Kyrie Irving would say, we don't need a coach. They had a good coach. Durant and Irving wanted him fired. And the Nets said, okay. Ooh. They wanted him fired. And they fired him. And now guess what? They hired a coach who had no experience. And Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant he didn't like it. He didn't like the way that coach was, was handling practices. Which, by the way, can we mention, is it quite possible that the practices were a little bit on the softer side because Durant was coming off of missing an entire season? Because he had a major injury history? Because he was coming off an Achilles tear? Is it possible and that your other star player, Kyrie Irving, is always hurt when he's not finding other reasons not to play and be anti-Semitic. That he's always hurt too? Is that possible? Maybe that's why we took a little bit easy in practices? Okay. Maybe. Might be possible. So, no problem holding Steve Nash accountable. Never holds Kyrie Irving accountable. Never, ever holds Kyrie Irving accountable. Now, how about here? So, speaking of which, this was another takeaway from the story yesterday. When Kevin Durant talks about, uh, you know, not being a good leader. Which is not he's a terrible leader. I'm not a leader? What the F does that mean? A lot of people say I'm not a leader because I didn't tell Kyrie to get vaccinated. Come on. Or I didn't condemn Kyrie for leaving the team, going out and living his life. I'm not about to tell a grown-ass man what he can and can't do with his own life and dissect his views or how he thinks about shit. Okay. All right. 
That's kind of what comes along with being a leader. Is you're the guy who sits others down and tells them, hey, we all got to get on the same page. We're not just going AWOL for two weeks like Irving did a couple years ago. And he's showing up uh, at parties unvaccinated. Now he has to sit out games because he violated protocol. Th this is the kind of stuff that a leader does and holds dudes accountable. So we want to hold the coach accountable and ask him to be fired. And he's not even willing to have a conversation with Kyrie about leaving the team. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. If what I used to do is Zaslow and Joy, I used to do Zaslow and Amber, great girls. When I used to do those shows, if Amber just up and dipped for a couple weeks, went AWOL, didn't tell anyone, you don't think I would call her up and say, yo, time, what type of shit you on? You don't think if I was doing the show with Joy and Joy up and dips, she's got to take some time off, she's got to go AWOL, she's, she's doing something which is preventing her from doing the show with me, you don't think I'm going to sit down with Joy and say, what's going on? We ne I need you here. We're in this together. We made this decision here to be on this team together. What are you doing? You, you can't, that's called being a leader. You think if Amber or Joy just up and dipped, took some time off, isn't doing what's best for the show, I'm not at least going to have a conversation? I mean, look, he, he doesn't have to be a leader, but own up to it. He's not. He's an amazing basketball player. He is not a winning player. He's not. 11 years, not counting this year, this, this will be 12. 12 years not playing for the Warriors. He's been to the finals one time. Lost. One time. One of the all-time great players, 12 years not playing next to Steph Curry. Has never won anything and has only been to the finals one time. Not a winning player. No problem holding Steve Nash accountable, wanting him fired, won't even have a conversation with Kyrie Irving. Come on. You don't think Amber or Joy behave the way that he's behaving? I'm not going to at least have a conversation, say, yo, what type of shit you on? Not even a conversation? And how about this one here too? So this is also talking about, you know, why he's requesting it, why he requested a trade Look at our starting lineup. Edmund Sumner, Royce O'Neal, Joe Harris, Nick Claxton. I mean, it's not disrespect, but what are you expecting from that group? You expect us to win because I'm out there. So if you're watching from that lens, you're expecting us to play well because number seven is out there. Well, yeah. Yeah. Any lineup that Giannis is on the floor with, I expect him to win. Any lineup that Luka Doncic is on the floor with, I expect him to win. You can look at the Mavericks. You think Luka Doncic is playing with, with like, you think he's got a good supporting cast? You go look again. And, and, and by the way, no disrespect. Hey, let me list all the guys that I play with that suck, but no disrespect. Edmund Sumner, Royce O'Neal, Joe Harris, Nick Classen. It's not disrespect. What he expected from that group. Yeah, let me name all the guys that I play with who suck, but no disrespect. Now, here's where he's full of shit. Because he's talking about... He's talking... And, and by the way, I, I mean, just crushing your... like. Crushing your teammates there. You know what? Like, cause what's the point? You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when Shaq, who I love, but it reminds me of when Shaq on his way out here in 2008. It was no point, and this really helped create the the rift between the Heat and Shaq, which of course has been totally patched up. But when Shaq was on the way out, and and he's taking shots at Chris Quinn and Ricky Davis. What's the point? What's the point of taking shots at Chris Quinn and Ricky Davis? It, like, this reminds me of, of, of Shaq on his way out. But here, here's why Durant is full of shit. He's talking about the reasons that he wanted to be traded, the reasons he requested the trade. Look at our starting lineup. Sumner, Royce O'Neal, Joe Harris, Claxton, and me. That wasn't his starting lineup. That wasn't his starting lineup over the summer. First of all, Royce O'Neal wasn't even on the team at that point. But, like... If you talk to Kevin Durant over the summer when he requested the trade, his starting lineup is him, Joe Harris, Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons. Like, this wasn't his starting lineup. This isn't why part of why he's requesting a trade. It's full of shit. Like, his starting lineup, he said, is Durant and Irving and Ben Simmons and 
you know, maybe Seth Curry and, and, and Joe Harris. Like, that's... Or, or put in whatever big man you want there. Hell, bring in DeAndre Jordan back. You guys love him. It's kind of full of shit. No problem holding the coach accountable, though. Refuses to hold Kyrie Irving accountable. No, no accountability here directed toward Kyrie Irving in the story. None. None. My biggest takeaway, though, he's telling everyone he wants Kyrie Irving back. That's, that's my biggest takeaway. Because he, he's naming all, you know, the guys he's starting with now. Not the reason he requested a trade. That, he's full of crap there. But he's naming all the guys that are in the starting lineup now. He, this whole thing was, he's telling everyone he wants Kyrie Irving back. He's telling the owner he wants Kyrie Irving back. He's telling the general manager he wants Kyrie Irving back. And, and he's not going to be, like, I know teams are monitoring now about a trade. If you're a Heat fan, like, hey, you know, this is why the Heat held on to their, you know, assets. Because what if Durant wants another trade? So I don't think he's going to request a trade again because it makes it look like this story makes it look like Nash was a major problem to him. And he's praising Jacques Vaughn here. You know, Jacques Vaughn's in on the way I want to do things. He just wants Kyrie back. He's not requesting a trade. You can't then. It, it'll make, he, he would look foolish for the Nash stuff. And then he also is saying that Jacques Vaughn is, all, they're on the same shit. It's just about him telling everybody, subtly, wants Kyrie back. That's what this is about. So, anyway, that was the big story yesterday as far as the NBA goes, was Durant explaining this trade request. But my biggest takeaways, he, uh, no problem holding Nash accountable, refuses to hold Kyrie Irving accountable. He's kind of full of crap as far as his lineup goes. Uh, and he just wants Kyrie back. That's what it's about.